A few years after Christopher Columbus had discovered the New World, a number of famous explorers, still in quest of a mythical path of gold to the Indies, landed in that part of South America, now known as the Argentine. One of these explorers, Pedro de Mendoza, probably saw in the fertile soil of its vast pampas something of the potentialities that were destined to make the Argentine one of the richest countries in the world. And thus it was that Mendoza lingered on the pampas with his dreams and founded Buenos Aires, which is today the largest city in South America and the gateway to the Argentine. Buenos Aires is situated on the banks of the Rio de la Plata, a river so wide that it reminds one of the sea. The Rio de la Plata, or River of Silver, was so named by its Spanish discoverers because they believed it flowed through a land that was rich in silver. In truth, however, this river is rich only in mud, the same kind of mud that may have inspired the early settlers to cultivate the fertile pampas from which it comes. And by so doing, they have made the Rio de la Plata, in reality, a river of silver, for it is the main artery to the wealth that is contributed toward making Buenos Aires one of the world's most beautiful man-made cities. We refer to it as a man-made city because all of its beautiful parks, boulevards, buildings, and magnificent monuments owe their existence entirely to the genius of man, who received little or no support from the natural beauties of nature in making Buenos Aires a wonder city. The greatest monument to the memory of this constructive genius is the city itself, in the heart of which the Plaza de Mayo forms a beautiful approach to the presidential palace. It is no exaggeration to say that the latest innovation from Paris will find the most immediate response in the smart shops of the Calle Florida, old and narrow, but still the chief shopping street of the city. Buenos Aires has always held its doors wide open to the foreign, and consequently it now has a cosmopolitan population of two million people, a large number of whom are Italian and French. The age-old custom of selling milk direct from the producer to the consumer is one of the most unique sights in the streets of Buenos Aires. The first appearance of cattle in the Argentine is credited to seven cows and a bull brought from Brazil in the 16th century. Today, the Argentine exports more cattle and hides than any other country in the world. Just outside the city at El Tigre, we had the pleasure of meeting two gentlemen of the Argentine. The El Tigre River is a source of healthful diversion for the people of Buenos Aires enhanced, as it were, by the ever-present spirit of gaiety and song. <laughs> Abrazado con el tuyo, pero el alma separado. No llores, mi alma, no llores, no, que por tus penas me muero yo. Ah, 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 ah. Eres bonita y preciosa, eres capullo de rosa cortado a la madre. Eres bonita y preciosa, eres capullo de rosa cortado a la madre. Argentines are a pleasure-loving people, and nothing holds a more important place in their field of sport than horse racing. The racetrack at Palermo is one of the proudest possessions of the jockey club, which is said to be the richest in the world. 
Aside from the internationally famous horse races which it sponsors, this institution is the hub around which revolves practically all the social life of the Argentine. Races take place here daily, and in the height of the season, the purses are so large that tremendous fortunes are won and lost during a single race. In Buenos Aires, it is a violation of the law for a man to appear in public without a coat, even though the heat may be unbearable. Consequently, some of the men wear pajama coats, thereby avoiding a serious breach of etiquette, as well as a possible fine of five pesos. Much of the romance of old Spain still remains reincarnate in the lovely women of the Argentine. It is seldom that an Argentine woman is troubled about the rights of her sex or any of the more virile notions that have stirred modern womanhood. For she seems to be content to live behind a veil of romance and to accept as her due the admiration so lavishly bestowed upon her. We doubt that in all of Buenos Aires there is a child who does not know Benito and his pigeons. Benito has the soul of an artist, for not satisfied with the somber coloring of the pigeons as nature had planned them, he paints them with all the colors of the rainbow. Rose and blue, or orange and green, mingle with the dull gray or white of their own soft feathers. And one can see that Benito is very fond of his pigeons. All that he has is theirs. He feeds them and houses them, and with the bright colors he gives them, they bring a joy to all the little children who see them. Benito is more than an artist. Far away from the city itself, the picturesque dancers of the ranchero remind us of the life that was in full sway when the gaucho was the hero of the pampas, a colorful life that is still the common heritage of romantic Argentina. For their mate, or tea, the Argentines will forego any luxury. Mate is made from an evergreen shrub, similar to common holly, which has been dried and pulverized. Mate acts as a marvelous restorative after great fatigue, and it has been used by all classes in South America since the beginning of the 17th century. the spirit of romance, which is fast disappearing from a world overburdened with stern realities, still remains in the hearts of the Argentine people. And it is with this thought that we reluctantly say, farewell to romantic Argentina.